Hello everyone and uh, welcome to re-entry. In this video I'll be going through uh, the EMS pre-launch tests and we'll take a quick look at the entry monitoring system itself. So the entry monitoring system is uh, what we usually refer to as the EMS. And the EMS is responsible for monitoring uh, Delta V burns as well as your entry trajectory and can also provide ranging information uh, during, for example, lunar module docking. Uh, it got a lot of different functions and uh, this selector here is called a function uh, selector. And then you have the mode switch, uh, which could be a normal standby or the backup uh, uh, VHF range. Uh, it got the screen in middle, uh, which is a um, minor scroll, which uh, moves towards the left during entry and then in the middle here there's an orange uh, orange line that kind of shows your current uh, velocity and uh, a needle on the back side of this will then draw a line uh, of your current uh, g-forces relative to your velocity so this will draw a real-time graph during entry we'll go through that in uh, a different video uh, today we'll be focusing on the tests itself we have a GTA switch. This is only used during ground testing uh, and should uh, should be uh, off uh, before you perform the tests. And if you're in orbit, this should always be enough. Uh, you have the Delta V slash EMS set switches, uh, which allows you to move the scroll or set a range or Delta V uh, based on the function switch. Uh, we have two lights. One is the 0.05G uh, light and the SPS thrust light. So this light, the 0.5G light, will uh, illuminate once uh, the command module ex ex is experiencing more than 0.05Gs, which is kind of the upper layers of the atmosphere during entry. And then SPS thrust is always on if the NG, uh, SPS engine is running. Uh, the delta V slash range uh, shows you the remaining range during entry or uh, delta V during um, uh, uh, your delta V burns. And then you have this uh, RSI, uh, which basically shows you uh, the current lift vector during entry. Uh, as you roll the capsule, uh, through the atmosphere. This will show you what, uh, in what direction the lift vector currently is, which means that if you roll through the atmosphere, uh, the uh, command module will uh, use its center of gravity offset to produce a lift vector. So uh, when it flies through the atmosphere, air will then hit the bottom part of the command module and uh, create a lift vector. And this lift vector is important during entry because this is what uh, decides how far you will travel through the atmosphere, how quickly you will descend through it, but also uh, the amount of g-forces you will experience. Uh, there's a two lights here which will illuminate uh, about 10 seconds after the 0.5g light illuminates, which will then show you which uh, direction you should be uh, be when you hit the atmosphere, basically heads up or heads down. Uh, heads up, uh, that means that your head, uh, and if you look out the window, you will see Earth below you. Uh, you're kind of in the right direction, heads up. That will produce a lift vector down. So if you're heads up and you enter the atmosphere, uh, you will kind of dive into the atmosphere and start to kind of, it's like an airplane will be flying upside down and produce a lift vector downwards towards Earth. If the uh, uh, astronaut, if you look out the window and uh, you see the Earth above you, which means that you're upside down, the lift vector will, will be upwards, so towards space from Earth. This will uh, uh, make uh, the lift vector, uh, as you enter the denser part of the atmosphere, produce an upwards force, which will um, kind of make your vertical velocity um, uh, reduce your vertical velocity as you go through the atmosphere. Uh, 
uh, thus reducing your g-load, but also uh, has the potential of uh, making you skip out of the atmosphere. So the RSI is all about just giving you an indication of uh, 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 where your current lift vector is. Uh, the data source is the GDC, so make sure that your uh, GDC is aligned with your IMU before you trust this uh, lift vector. Uh, yes, so let's get uh, through it. The uh, testing of the EMS um, is done uh, by the backup crew, uh, but also there are tests uh, that need to be done in orbit as well to make sure that it works before entry and so on. Uh, today I'll be going through the EMS pre-launch tests and I'll also make a separate video for the EMS testing in orbit. So I'm going to open this checklist and it's runnable if you want to uh, have a guide that does this uh, with you. But for now I'll just function uh, go through this checklist myself. So first of all make sure that the EMS is off and that the two EMS circuit breakers on panel, panel 8 is closed, which they are. Uh, secondly, uh, the GTA switch is usually covered uh, in my uh, model. I've not yet added a cover, but uh, since we're on the ground, we will need to uh, set the ground testing switch to up. This will this is because of uh, simulated gravity model, and the EMS mode should be in standby. Uh, we can uh, uh, skip the alpha numeric brightness, uh, since this is a sim, um, I'll set this to delta V. You will see that the numbers here are shown in green. Then we'll leave it here for five seconds. Uh, the third switch uh, is something that you can skip. This is done automatically. So I'll just quickly go to um, uh, the next step here, which is to set the delta V. So I'll right click the switch to move it to the delta v set and then we need to slew the delta v indicator to uh, uh, plus one five eight uh, six point eight that's something that you can do with this switch but as mentioned we'll need to be in a normal mode to do that so i'll just use this switch here you can see that you can click the lower part to move it on a decimal level or you can click the upper part to move it in tens, but you can also hold in the mouse cursor. So if I hold down uh, on the upper part, you can see that it's increasing quite slowly. But if I move the uh, mouse button up, it, you will see that it goes up and down faster re relative to where you're pressing. Uh, anyways, so we should be at one, five, eight. Eight. And then uh, we will need to uh, test if this delta V measurement works. So then I'll uh, right click to move uh, the functionality to the delta V test. And uh, now the uh, test is saying that the SPS thrust light should be on. The delta V uh, indicator should decrease. And the SPS thrust light uh, is out at delta V uh, for about zero. Uh, which is okay, and the delta V indicator stops at plus minus 20.8 feet per second. Uh, we're at minus 1.2, uh, so then I'll switch this back to standby. And now we are going to go through the EMS tests. That's the one, two, three, four, and five uh, functions here. So I'll just use left mouse button to set this one to off first. And then uh, I'll set it to uh, EMS test 1. Uh, I'm still in standby mode, so I'll be here for about 5 seconds. And you can use the event timer here. Uh, let's see if... Uh, I can set this to on. To just pay attention to timing. Uh, Alright, 5 seconds. And then we set the EMS to normal. Uh, this will start the first test, and uh, each test uh, typically takes about 10 seconds. And uh, at the end of this 10 second phase, we should uh, see that the 0.5G light is out, 
the SPS fresh light is out, uh, the lift vector up and down lights are out, the range indicator is 0, 0.0 nautical miles, and then uh, we can screw the scroll until display uh, index superimposed upon notch at start of next self-test pattern, and that's kind of uh, where it already is. So this is the start of a self-testing pattern. This one got uh, a lot of different patterns. You can see that this is one test, but if you need to do other tests, you can slew this one uh, to the next pattern. But we'll stick with the first one now. And uh, then we will set the uh, EMS function to two and leave it there for 10 seconds. And uh, once uh, 10 seconds has passed, the 0.05G light should be uh, eliminated, and we can see that that's currently happening. Next, I will go to EMS test 3. During this test, the 0.5G light should remain on, and after about 10 seconds, the lift vector down light should be on. And that we can see there now. So this test is complete. Uh, before moving to test 4, we will set the range indicator to uh, 58.0. So this function switch here uh, decides what this means, if it's delta V or range. And in this mode, this is uh, range. So now I'm going to set this to uh, 58. There we go. 58.0 nautical miles. And uh, now, uh, if I move to test pattern 4, this one uh, should start moving. And you can see that the trace pattern is following our test pattern correctly, as this uh, range is decreasing. And 0, 0.0 is at this line here. So we saw that the 0.5G light was on. All other lights were out. And we uh, saw the tracing range indicator counted down and it stopped at 0, 0.0. Don't worry if there's a 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or something like that on this one, that's normal. And lastly, we have uh, test 5, which is this mode. Uh, 0 0.05G should uh, be on, lift vector up should eliminate at about 10 seconds into the test. Uh, if uh, the range indicator would be something else than 0, 0, 0.0, it would reset back to 0, 0, 0.0. And then our uh, scribe, it traces this vertical line all the way uh, from 9Gs all the way up to its uh, 0, 0.28 uh, G position. Then I'll uh, move this one here a little bit, and then we uh, will go to EMS function, and that's the range set. And that's kind of the end of this step. It is important to um, to always um, uh, go through test five before entry. Uh, if you perform the entry checklists, um, I'll go through this in, in another video. Uh, you can skip one, two, three, and four but you will have to do uh, step five. Um, okay, so we're now at uh, the range set. I'm going to set the uh, mode to standby. And set this one to off. Then I can uh, uh, set this one to down as well. And uh, that's it for the EMS testing. I also noticed that the, the light here is still on. Uh, that's because I forgot to, uh, to remove a flag in the range set. It should uh, reset this one as well. So that's something I will fix in the next patch. Um, okay, so that's it for the EMS testing. Keep in mind that this is primarily used during entry, 
but it can also be used during uh, SPS burn monitors or performing a semi-automatic SCS burn. So I'll go through that in uh, another video as well. Thank you for watching and I hope you will uh, enjoy re-entry.